Born into culture, art resides in culture. Without beauty, life is reduced to a set of mundane tasks for survival. Abiola was born in Okeo in Oya State in Nigeria. He hails from the Yoruba-speaking people. The fifth of nine children, his father was a policeman and his mother a housewife and sculptor. Four of his siblings are also artists. At the tender age of five, Abiola started to sculpt. He remembers sculpting a bird that garnered a lot of attention from his teachers. Abiola is a true hybrid of different art generations, from mastering the techniques of life drawings, anatomy, portraiture, figure painting, and sculpture. He proceeded to earn a college degree in sculpture and has chosen art as a translational form of representation and expression. A firm believer in providence, art collectors admired his work and made pronouncements that it would someday take him abroad. He yearned to travel to the West. He kept this dream alive, constantly badgering his older brother, himself an artist, on how he could travel to America. His first major exhibition was held at the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, a research institute in Ibarden, Western Nigeria. While there, he would meet Peju Wilson. John Abiola Akintola is a young, one of the very youngest, uh, in fact, the youngest artist that I came across in the early, in the 80s, 85, when we were at the International Institute of tropical agriculture in Ibadan or your state. He used to come onto the campus to show a few of his artwork and I saw the great potential in Abiola. It was a place where we had 44 nationalities from all over the world. So you can imagine everybody wanted to know about the culture and the art form of Nigeria. This young man came with a lot of exuberance. They invited him to their home and ended up commissioning a portrait from him. Wilson, believing in Abiola's talent and vision, was pivotal in this leg of his journey. And we decided that, okay, we'll bring him to America. We'll bring him to the great United States of America. We spoke to Abiola, got together his papers, and brought him here with us. In Chicago, unable to make a living as an artist, Abiola fell into cab driving. Whenever he was referred to as a cab driver by his passengers, he'd insist that he was an artist. Occasionally, he would receive praise for some of his drawings he kept in the cab. He felt gratified and hopeful that someday he could resume work as an artist. This went on for years. In that time, he had a family, three boys and a girl. One fateful day, he picked up a man who wondered why he was driving a cab but claimed to be an artist. This passenger was unimpressed by his drawings 
telling him his children could do better. He told Abiola, you have to be good to be great. You must be organized, knowledgeable, and disciplined. Planning, preparation, a burning desire, and an obsession toward the goal must be held constantly in the mind. What do you want from life? It turned out the passenger was a motivational speaker. Two weeks after this encounter, Abiola called his wife to pick him up from the cab stand. He was done being a cab driver. The words, you can never be greater than the thought that dominates your mind, played over and over. He cut up his chauffeur license. With no other source of income or plan, and a wife with four children, his prospects were bleak. Discouraged and dejected, he stayed at home idle. Encouraged by a friend, he started painting again and took part in the Uptown Arts Festival in Minnesota. It was a successful exhibition that led to greater triumphs. Sometime in 2009, after the election of Barack Obama, Abiola made a seven foot by eight foot bar relief of Obama. He called it one day of rain. Later, he came in contact with Chinese artist Su Hong Fei through a friend, Collins Wu. Last year, I took Gabriella to China uh, last, last December, and he was very, very impressed uh, by what he saw, uh, by how he was treated in China. I, I have lots of friends in Art Circle in China, and uh, many of them are very accomplished. Uh, prestigious artists in China. And then we went to Guangzhou, I met Mr. Xu, uh, the famous sculptor uh, in southern China who has, uh, you know, uh, agreed to have an exhibition, you know, uh, held together with Arbiola in, this, in October of 2010 in anticipation of China's, uh, in anticipation of the Asian Games in China. Abiola and Su Hong Fei share the same vision of using art to benefit one's community. In Abiola's case, providing academic scholarships to students in Chicago and Okeho, his hometown in Nigeria. In November, he will become a part of a cultural exchange program in which Abiola, his brother, and an emerging artist, Abidami, will become the first black artist whose works will be featured in an exhibition during the opening of the All Asian Games. It remains to be seen what medium Abiola will choose in his works. Will it be oil, clay, metal, or a combination thereof? <laughs>